Hello out there. Welcome everybody to another live stream here from us at Autocrit. If you're not familiar with Autocrit, we are a premier home for writers. We have our fully functioning writer's desk, which we're going to take a lot of uh, look into today. We're going to take a deep dive into it. We have our author community where you can meet fellow authors like yourself. We have our academy page filled with all kinds of courses that help you level up in your writing skills and specific genres and about specific writing tips and then we have author services where we give you one-on-one -on -one feedback about your uh, material in addition to other offerings there as well uh, i see i have people here from all over so welcome to all of you today i thought that we would talk a lot about structure now i know when you usually say that it's like i'm gonna turn away no 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 don't turn that dial just yet. I know when you say structure, a lot of artists kind of, you know, freeze up or worry because structure can sound, well, restrictive, right? That's what structure is in a sense. It's a skeleton. It's a framework for you to hang your ideas. However, uh, as we progress today, what I think you're going to see is that not only can structure be really helpful and freeing, but also uh, how the writer's desk can help you achieve that structure a lot more painlessly uh, than what you are usually accustomed to. All right. I need structure. Yes. Yes, we all need structure, right? Speaking of structure, let's go ahead and get started and take a dive right into that writing desk, uh, shall we? All right. So. Um, let me go ahead and shrink myself down to the corner here. I don't have to be so prominent. Okay, so we have our writer's desk. And on the main page of the writer's desk, you can see we have story ideas and planning. We have write, revise, and edit, and analyze an existing story. The truth of the matter is, is wherever you are in the writing process, uh, you can apply some structure and help yourself out. Uh, now, I'm going to go through this piece by piece. I'm going to look at it, what if you came to the writer's desk without anything and how it can help you get structure. Uh, and then we're going to take it further into the writing process, even down to, all right, I've written everything and I want to get structure now. I wrote it in, you know, I pantsed it. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just kind of running and now I want to see what I have. Uh, yeah, we can do that as well. All right. So we're going to start at the very uh, beginning, a very good place to start, right? As it goes. Uh, so I'm going to go to a new story builder idea. Now, the fiction story idea, it's kind of small here. Let me zoom in here so you can see it better. All right. Uh, the fiction, uh, the uh, story builder uh, for the, uh, the fiction story builder uh, gives you ideas and it helps you organize your ideas as you are developing them. Let me see if I can get the right framing here and get as much in the shot as possible. There we go. So... The nice thing about it, I was talking about this last week when I was talking about characters uh, and how you can use it to brainstorm characters. But you can really use this to brainstorm anything involving your structure and particularly uh, to help you outline an entire story if you so desire. I know a lot of you are not necessarily planners. You may want to pants, and I'll get to you a little bit later. But for those of you who like to outline, this is a really great template to work from, right? You have your opening premise, you have your world building elements, you have your character building elements, and then you have your beat sheet. And the nice thing about this is that this is AI uh, empower empowered. Uh, and so you can get ideas from our system and uh, if you ever get stuck. And so that can be a great way to brainstorm, uh, to clear the air, to give yourself some suggestions when you know, you're just not sure what to do next. The nice thing about the suggestions is that, of course, you can use or reject whatever you want. And uh, even if you don't use it, you might end up finding that it inspires you to get the direction that you want. Sometimes you just need something to react to, right? That blank page can be the worst. Um, but on the other hand, if, for, if you just want to uh, develop it on your own, you can just use it as a template. So like, let's imagine that I have a story premise, something like a man uh, discovers that, I'm just making this up right now, that his couch is a portal to an alternate 
dimension of of the world where everything is aimed around him being a celebrity. I don't know. I'm just going that route. Now, if I uh, go in here and I was planning this out and I was, yeah, so it's going to give me an idea. It's going to say the alternate dimension is a bustling city with skyscrapers and bright lights and all of these things. The streets are always crowded with fans of the man eager for his autograph or selfie. Fair enough. All right. That makes sense. And so I can get ideas for the characters. I did this last week. So I have my protagonist, Jake Thompson. And he wants to escape the overwhelming fame and attention in the alternate dimensional world. Uh, fair enough. And there's a celebrity in the alternate dimension. I'm just going to go ahead with these suggestions because I'm going to assume that, you know, we have fleshed all of this out. We like all of these uh, different things that we have created. We like the world building. We like the character building. We're very satisfied with all of these results. And like I said, you could have just done all of this yourself. You didn't even have to use our system uh, to generate the ideas, but you could be using it as a template. But then we're going to come to the outlining, right? How do we turn this into something that's a story? So we're going to go down to our story beats. Now we have a few different options to pick from, uh, which can help arrange our thoughts. If you're not that familiar with story beats, by the way, you can look in the archives in this channel. We actually have videos about all of the story beats, particularly in this plot centered one. We went over it a few times. Um, I'll try to put it in the description too when the live stream is done. Uh, so you can click the link as well. But uh, these are those linchpin moments that make a story work. Uh, now, if you do not naturally think this way, imagine, you know, you go through life and you, you, you don't really uh, know uh, whether or not uh, that, uh, you know, you don't know what the story beats are of stories you like. You just know that you like them. You, you're, it's not easy for you to analyze them. This is why generating some ideas about your story can help uh, because what you can see is different things the computer would suggest for those beats. And then that can help you identify, ah, that's the kind of moment that would go there. Even if that is not specifically what you would go with. You see what I mean? Like it could give you some inspiration and it's going to give you some helpful tips. So if we go to the opening image here and I click the button, it's going to say, consider starting with Jake Thompson lounging on his couch, looking content, but slightly bored. And then it'll tell you some of the different things that you need to do in your opening image, right? So things like you need to establish your setting. Okay. Makes sense. You need to introduce your character. Also makes sense. You need to set up the tone and the genre of your piece, right? What kind of story is this? Who is the audience for it? You need to foreshadow your conflict. You need to have careful exposition. So you could say, established while fame surrounds him constantly in this world, it leaves Jake feeling empty inside. This emotional conflict is crucial to connect reader with his journey. Sure. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. So we're actually, it's interesting that it chose to literally start the character in that alternate world. Maybe that isn't what you would want. You would want to start it in a different spot. But having these different categories and what it looked for in terms of developing a strong opening image for you is certainly inspiration for you to adjust it and create your own opening image, right? So let me go a little bit deeper. Let me go all the way down to the disaster moment. So let's imagine we are trying to see the worst possible moment in this book. What could happen? And he has the destruction of the statue and his likeness, a symbol of a celebrity status. The statue crumbles to pieces by an orchestrated attack by Vanessa Fuller's leaving Jake feeling lost and without a sense of purpose. It's kind of interesting because you have a story where he's trying to escape his celebrity and then kind of the worst thing is you get exactly what you want and then you don't know what to do about it. It could be rather fascinating. But one thing you'll want to look at, again, are what are some of the things that it's developing when it comes to the story beat? It's going to say you needed to have a strong emotional impact. You needed to have a reflection of central uh, theme. You needed to have feeling near death, near death of the idea. 
uh, symbolizing, not necessarily they actually are on the edge of death, but that their goal looks dead in the water. They seem hopeless, right? Often uh, you end up isolated as well. And so you could say, despite being surrounded by crowds that once adored him, there's a stark loneliness that engulfs him as he realized he has to face this crisis alone. So even though there are other people around, he feels isolated because nobody likes him anymore, right? And so uh, very clever. But these are the things that you would want to look for when you're making a solid disaster. So the nice thing about the writer's desk story builder is that, again, you can go ahead and you can get the ideas from it and literally put it in. But it also gives you some suggestions as to what to even look for, right? <laughs> How might you uh, approach that story? What might you uh, want to do at this beat? And so, for again, for those of you who are not very familiar with story beats, it's a great way to uh, train yourself into them because it is a helpful way of diagnosing your story. If you don't have story beats, then essentially you end up where things happen and then it's over. But if anything is broken along the way, it's hard to identify where the break is. It would be like trying to you know, do an autopsy of somebody without understanding the skeletal system or any of our uh, processes. You would be like, well, they're alive and now they're dead. But we need to know why. We need to know how it happened as well. Uh, somebody was saying, can you watch a recording later? Yeah, everything is going to be recorded and put right on as well. Yes, if you put book one into the series of the story builder, uh, yeah, you can get ideas. So what you would do is you would put in like your world building elements, your characters and things like that, right? And then, uh, yeah, you can get ideas for further adventures with those same characters. I love this. Creativity works best within limits. It really does. It really, um, you know, when you give yourself all of the options in the world, it can be very scary um, and disjointed, right? When we're enjoying a book, we're not just enjoying a random stream of consciousness. And I know there's experimental types of novels and things like that, but no, there is a rhythm, there's a cadence, there is a conversation, there's a structure to it that we're used to, we're accustomed to, we appreciate, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's no different than the fact that there are certain recipes or things that we like, right? And you can adjust it and you can create new riffs on a dish, but you don't always have to reinvent the wheel. Not always necessary. All right, so that shows you a way to develop an idea from scratch, like an outline. So an, a, a, an outline from scratch. We have no nothing on the page yet. We are not even writing anything yet. We're going to outline first. And you might be saying, Blah, Daniel, that is not my process at all. I'm a pantser. I'm a dyed-in-the-wool pantser. Okay, that's fine. So we're going to do it a different way. So if I was a dyed-in-the-world pantser, what I would do is I would go into the writer's desk, okay? And then I would just start writing. And I would just be like, whatever. Uh, the man looked down at his couch and realized it was a portal to another dimension, which is a terrible first sentence, but you know, I'm just doing this live. So <laughs> it's the garbage draft. It doesn't have to be good right now. It just doesn't exist. It's first draft, okay, people? Stop judging me. Anyway, you know how it goes. Uh, but what we would do along the way here is we would be bringing up the story builder, or we could be bringing up notes and keeping track of what we're doing. I really recommend bringing up the story builder, and I'll tell you why in just a second. So if I bring up the story builder in here, and I say it's a new idea, okay, so now I have that screen I just showed you, but it's on the right side of my window. And let me just uh, pan over a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. My apologies here. Where's my screen? There we go. Right. So we still have the text on the left and then we have the story builder on the right. And in fact, you can expand it if you want, make it a split screen, you know, expand it as you make an adjustment and then close it up and things like that. Now, why is it particularly helpful to have uh, this up at the same time? Well, imagine if instead of, you know, the man looked down at the couch, I said it was Bob. Well, I could scroll down here and I could say, oh, my protagonist is named Bob. Okay, that's all I got so far. 
and then I can close this out and then I can keep going, right? Or I can leave it open and keep expanding on Bob if I want. But the thing is, is that I'm holding all of my ideas as I'm going, right? I am keeping track. And so as I, as I go, again, we're just pantsing. As I'm going, I'm putting things in. So if I have a world building thing and I'm like, oh, uh, this is in New York. It's like starts in the city of New York, you know? And again, I can be keeping track of what goes on. Now, why is all of this relevant? It's like, besides the fact that it can hold what you have. Well, if we get to the beat sheet level, then we can start putting in beats as they come in. And this can be helpful for if you were to get stuck. So if I said, uh, Bob looks into his couch and sees a portal to another dimension is the opening image, right? And then the glimpse of theme could be something like, Let's just do the classic cliche. There's no place like home. Okay. And then when we go to uh, the inciting incident, let me drop on down to that. The inciting incident, I could say, in the alternate dimension, Bob realizes he is super popular. Okay. And decides to stay not realizing it will mean that he is stuck there unless he defeats the dragon. You know, again, I'm just making stuff up, right? Okay, so we have all this set up. And as I am writing, I'm also writing what I'm doing on the right. And again, why does this matter? Well, imagine I were to get all the way to, like, the disaster, and I'm stuck. Well, I could generate an idea and it'll give me some ideas of what could happen next. And so you'll see, it knows that my story is about a dragon because I established that. And of course, if I would have given it more story beats along the way, it would get even more specific about what the disaster could be. So if you ever get stuck on your story, again, you can go and you can get some ideas. Uh, you're never, you know, frozen and with that blank page. And again, it may not be an idea that you actually even like or, or even want exactly, but it'll give you things to think about. See, that's the thing. It'll be like, oh, right. I need the complete failure or loss. I need the emotional impact. I need the reflection. I need the near death. I need the isolation. These are things I should be concerned about. Am I writing that right now? Right? And I understand in the first draft, we often kind of just literally fly by the seat of our pants. However, if you want to get a little bit more structured about your first draft, this is a way to hybrid. And so you can be writing and more or less outlining at the same time. And the nice thing is, is when you're all done with your book, guess what? You now have a beat sheet already made, good to go, and uh, you are done. Couldn't you just analyze it at the point that you get stuck? Interizing, interrupting the flow, flow of the story can cause its loss. So constantly starting, stopping and starting might kill the story. Yeah, I recommend, you're right. Like you want to be careful with the ideas depending on what kind of artist you are, right? It's like a too many cooks spoil the broth, right? This is your assistant. So yeah, I would say a lot of the time you would just want to write, 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 write. Uh, keep track of what you're doing on the, uh, the sidebar. And then when you get to that point and you're like, I don't know what I want to do next, then hit the button, right? Because then it's a suggestion. All right. So here's another question. When you generate a AI for one section, does it update any other parts? No. It's only going to change this one, which is great because you might like what's in the other spot and it would clear it out. No, it's only going to change that one. And so, um, and, and because it's reliant on it, right? It's building on what you have already. So if you want to ever adjust anything, you do need to go back. It also does mean you would have to go back and adjust. So if you decided all of a sudden his name isn't Bob anymore, you will need to find all of the Bobs in this just like you would uh, with your document. Because otherwise it might come up, it might get confused as to whether or not his name is Bob or it's Chris. Or he, it might think his name is both or things like that. When you generate a for one section. Oh, yes, yeah, I just said that. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's not going it, to... The only thing that it's adjusting is what is right there. And of course, it's not touching your text at all. It's just an assistant and things like that. Uh, how do you add untitled idea to the blank document? It's going to automatically be called that uh, when you add it in because you'll say create a new and it will um, it will just call it untitled idea. So if you want to actually pair an idea that you've already made, you would select it as a unlinked idea when you click on the fiction story builder. Now, of course, I can also rename this idea and I can call this whatever this is, a uh, couch portal, right? And the nice thing about it is that, yeah, I can interact with it in here, but I could also just interact with it as its own outline. If I want to go back to story ideas, I will see couch portal in here and I can continue building it and uh, I can uh, develop it from here. See, I have starts in the city of New York, Bob, the story beats and all of that. This is particularly helpful if you want to brainstorm and you're like, well, should I have done it a different way? You could make a copy of it and then you can tinker, 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 tinker and figure out, is that version of the outline better than the one you have? And then you could take that back in to the writer's desk and attach that file to the document and then end up with a different one on the, on the sidebar. And you could use that as your reference while you make adjustments on your text in the left. Is there a way to easily enter the fiction story analysis for a work in progress into this and then generate an idea into this part of the story? Ah, that's a very good question. Yes, currently, no. Uh, but I like the way you're thinking because that's where we're going actually next. Uh, and things like that. Uh, somebody's asking, is it marked anywhere that a chunk of text is AI generated versus written by me? Well, nothing in your actual text is written by AI. Remember, it's all staying in that sidebar. So you would have to literally copy and paste it in. And considering it's a suggestion, it probably wouldn't naturally fit in your book, right? Because it's going to say, you could make this happen or you couldn't make that happen, right? It's not actually writing the scene. It's just giving you suggestions because uh, <laughs> it is acting as an assistant. It's not trying to generate actual text for you. And it will not put anything in the left, uh, you, you know, in the main document. It's all going to stay on the sidebar. All right. Yeah. Is it possible to start as a pantser? Correct. That's exactly what I was doing, right? So let me go back and I can show you. So the idea is that I didn't. I didn't have anything perhaps to start out with uh, when I started my story. So I'm just going to go into the document and I'm going to start chatting, chatting, chatting and all of that, uh, you know, talking, talk, you know, writing all my book. And then I can keep track with that uh, analysis. All right. That uh, story builder. So it's up here under planning. So you're going to hit planning. You're going to hit fiction story builder. And then it's going to pop up right here on the right. Look at that. Bing. And uh, yeah, you keep track of whatever you want to keep track of as a pantser. You just have to, you know, if you say, oh, it's set in Chicago. Oh, okay. Set in Chicago. Oh, the character has blue eyes. They have blue eyes, right? You just add whatever it is you think is necessary to know. And then whenever you get stuck, you can generate ideas. So let's imagine you have it all and you like don't know who the antagonist is, right? I believe I would have set up that it's the dragon. Let's see, though. Maybe it'll give the dragon a name. Drake. See, now it gave Drake a name. Drake didn't have a name before because it had enough suggestions, right? And then who is the character that's going to help the main character get past the obstacle? The relationship character. Um if you ever need to know what our archetypes mean, you can go to the little eyes and you can find out. So we have Luna. It's a wise and mystical oracle. Fair enough. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, somebody was asking, how do we set the genre? So there's a couple of places where you can get ideas that are specific for genre. Before I say that, though, let me say a distinction between genre and story type. 
Okay. So genre is generally the expectations, like the feeling and the tone, things like fantasy being about wish fulfillment and magical elements and sci-fi being about new scientific discoveries and, uh, you know, enlightenment and things like that. And romance, of course, is about romantic feelings. However, there's also story types, right? So if you scroll down in the beat sheet, you can find the different story types. So you can find things like a plot-centered story or a I could switch it to a romance or I could switch it to mystery. Sorry, the drop-down is not showing up on the screen because it's an extra window on top. But um, when I hit that drop down, I can hit. Uh, so I have story, mystery, uh, romance, and things like that. Now, keep in mind, this isn't exactly the same thing as a genre. Because just because I make it a mystery doesn't mean it's immediately going to make it look like Sherlock Holmes. If I established at the beginning in the premise that it's a sci-fi story, well, it's going to have sci-fi elements. So this is where I would put something that's a tonal or a genre thing. I would say sci-fi story with military elements or something like that i would put that in there and then that will inform the suggestions now keep in mind when you do things like that you run the risk of some of the suggestions getting a little bit more cliche or on the nose uh because again it's going to give you some of the best suggestions based on what it what it knows so if you find that it's getting a little bit bland you may want to back off on the genre suggestion just just some just some tips for you it's a thing that can come up all right i'm just looking All right, so you're asking, if you put Bob in the protagonist section and then you hit generate in the disaster section, what is it going to tell me two weeks later? Is that, no, it does not. There's no distinction between that. So, because again, the idea is that it's an assistant and it's helping you build that together. It's a partnership. And so it doesn't like bold out your text and it's like, this is what you inputted versus this is what uh, we suggested. Because it could be a, a, all different kinds of a, a mix. And I would expect that would be what most people do. They're not going to just take the suggestion and be like, that's brilliant. I love everything about it, right? Just like you wouldn't ask your friend or ask a consultant about it and uh, take everything they like either. You'll like certain things and then you will adjust it and then that's going to remain and that isn't. I mean, to be perfectly honest, when it comes to some of the projects that I've worked on, uh, there are certain things that have been suggested from people and I kind of remember and I'm sure there's things that they suggested and I don't remember from my writer's group. I'm like, yeah, maybe that the fact that, you know, that character made that comment or that that scene happened was something I had before or, or wasn't. I don't remember anymore because <laughs> other people get involved. It ends up being a highly collaborative process. So it's the same kind of thing as that. Uh, da, 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 da. hold on here. Let me go back. So somebody was asking about find and replace. So find and replace is just a general feature of AutoCrit. You're going to find it um, in the uh, magnifying glass. So what you'll do is you will find something. So let's imagine I want couch and I want to replace couches with chairs. So I would go to the next and it found it, and then I can just replace it, and it'll replace it with chair, right? Um, it's pretty simple. Sorry, now you can see that it was replaced with chair. I need to zoom out a bit and zoom in. Just a minute. Let me do it this way. It'll kind of word wrap it. That's all right. <laughs> but yeah, that is a uh, that is a feature there. Uh, any other questions there? But yeah, it is the magnifying glass. Find and replace. So like imagine instead of portal, I wanted to say gate. So I would go in here and I would say find the portal switch it to gate, and then I would hit find next, and then I could replace. <laughs> right. 
There you go. Which could be helpful if you change the name of the character or something like that. You did that changing of daddy to papa. Exactly. Exactly. So a question I have is, uh, how do you handle multiple protagonists or antagonists? Okay. So when it comes to story structure, I generally recommend at the level that we are talking about with the story builder that you really think of the story as having one central protagonist. That is the vast majority of literature. However, if you are very compelled that you think there are multiple protagonists, in other words, there are multiple people who the buck really stops with, they have a major impact on the story, the story will rise and fall based on their success, et cetera, et cetera, and they're equal, it's unlikely, but if that's your perception, what you'd want to do is you'd want to create a copy and you would want to reorient the characters because what you're going to have to think about is around that sphere of influence who are the different archetypes what are the beats for that specific character right because otherwise what you'll have is a story where you can have multiple points of view and you can have this story beat from this point of view and this because sometimes the opening image is not from your point of view it's from another character so like jurassic park or jaws or something like that the opening image is of the antagonist it's of the monster and we're not in the viewpoint, we're not in the main character's viewpoint. And so just because there is that other viewpoint character doesn't make them another protagonist. It just is another viewpoint. Uh, it's still ultimately going to rise and fall on that main character. Now, that being said, that gets us to what we were talking about last week. And if you haven't seen that video yet, go back to last week because we were looking at the analyzer and how it would analyze stories like Jekyll and Hyde, where the hero is their own antagonist, or something like Anne of Green Gables, where a central antagonist is not necessarily the way that you would orient yourself in a story like that. So um, let me go back, though, to um, uh, analyzing uh, in the story analyzer here. Hold on. So... Imagine you already have your story written. It's done. So you could go at that first page and uh, you can um, just say, I want to run the story in an analyzer. In which case, what it'll do is it'll give you a full synopsis of what is happening in your story right now. And so if uh, you just want to know, like, what even did I write, right? I pantsed it, and I'm not even sure what I have. You can go through, and the system will tell you. So, for example, you know, chapter one, story of the door opens with a vivid description of Mr. Utterson and all of that, okay? This is uh, Jekyll and Hyde, by the way. Uh, and uh, so we go through all of this thing, and, and it tells you, all of these characters and it says it leads on an ominous note and then there's conflict there are characters there's it tells you about the geography it tells you about the potential contradiction and all of those things now if you're thinking about this in terms of an outline this is more or less like a uh, an outline already all you would need to do is just a couple of steps. So what I would suggest, you know, because you don't need all of this detail necessarily in your outline. It's really a full analysis, right? So I would go to a display here, and I would say, first show none. But I would probably pick either the timeline analysis or the synopsis or both. But the timeline analysis is a really great just punch list of what happens in the story. So it's a great place to start for an outline. You know, it says introduction of this, they recount this, they amend this, they offer compensation, they reveal they have an access to a key, they read the will, they da 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 da, da all of these things, right? And so essentially, it's making a uh, outline just for you all together. Now, if you want to export this, you can. You can take these three dots and you can export either to a note within uh, your writing desk and you can be all compiled there, or you can even uh, do it to a Word document or something like that. Uh, perhaps you want to print it out, take it to the beach, chill out with your outline, you know, look at it on its own, lots of different things there. But it's just a brilliant thing, right? I told you, you know, if you are a pantser, uh, you can still use this in order to uh, 
uh, create your own outline. Essentially, it does the work for you. You don't have to remember what you actually uh, had to what you wrote, you know, because it does it for you. Uh, you found the story analyzer extremely useful for the self-editing process, right? Uh, it does only do it by chapter, but keep in mind if you export, it's going to be what's there on the screen, right? And so uh, you'll get all of that data into that one note or that one document. That's a way to compile it together. And of course, you can go further to the overall and uh, you could run it and you could get a whole premise, right? Now, this is going to be quite high level. However, it's a good bird's eye view of your whole story, and it'll tell you where it does a great job of fulfilling what its premise is. It's not going to decide what its premise should be. It's going to look at what it thinks you were trying to accomplish and if you did it well. Now, obviously, if it gets it way off and it's like, this is a drama, and you're like, well, this was meant to be a romance, or this is a romance, and you thought it would be a mystery, well, then you need to relook at a lot of things in your story, right? Uh, but generally, um, you're probably not going to be so off. But what it'll do is it'll give you suggestions on how to make it a bit stronger. Okay, I need to go back to something here. Somebody was talking about multiple protagonists, and I lost it. Yes, uh, this is correct. If you put this in the premise for the story builder, uh, yes, it would uh, affect things for sure. Ah, here it is. To clarify, you have a novel that encompasses over 100 years with three protagonists depending on the years. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, you have three different people in three different time frames. However, the question still is, who does the buck stop with for the ultimate story? You're going to have to stop the story somewhere, right? Something is trying to be accomplished, and you could say all three of them have to do it together, perhaps, but generally that's an unusual construction. Usually there is still somebody that the buck ultimately stops with that are the biggest reason why the the resolution of the plot can't happen or won't now if you're talking about something more like a memoir or something like that what you really have are basically three different stories and i would factor them in that way and i would build them out in three different ways um because it's essentially like uh and uh, it's almost like um uh, its own little anthology if you do it like that right because if you don't have them all interlocked to where somebody is ultimately the final answer and there is no final answer, then again, yeah, what you have are basically just a bunch of short stories. You don't really, it's, it's different than a full work. So the example I like to give is for Lord of the Rings. Like Lord of the Rings, you clearly have multiple protagonists in the sense of the fight on the, you know, the big wars going on at the same time where Frodo's trying to sneak and destroy the ring. Both are incredibly important, but ultimately it's about destroying the ring, right? And if that didn't happen, then none of the other stuff would matter. And so I think uh, you can make a case that Frodo is the central protagonist of the story, even though there are multiple points of view and other characters serve major roles in the story. You have a story where one character was separated from the rest of the third book and has a story and those of those he was separated from. Fair enough, but that sounds like a separate story, and that's fine if that's what you would do. Essentially, for something, even if you think about Lord of the Rings, right, it, they, they are separated, and it's almost like two books. You know, once you get past the first book, it's like four books because it's like these people's journey, these people's journey, these people's journey, these people's journey, right? However, um, I, there's that central worry, that central story question that does rise and fall in one person. And that's what keeps it from just being stories.
in the story premise, do you put all your ideas? You don't have to. Anything that's in any form, part of that form, is going to be used. So if it's in the character, it's going to be used. If it's going to, if it's in the plot beats, it's going to be used. If it's in, it's anywhere that's on that page. So if you say, if you said the premise was a woman falls in love with a bicyclist, and in general geography, you said it takes place in Chicago. It takes place in Chicago. When you get to the story beats and you hit generate, it's going to know it's in Chicago. So you don't have to put it all in the premise. What I recommended putting in the premise is things like tone and genre because that's going to have an impact on everything. But um, no, uh, you could have nothing in there at all, and it'll still generate ideas based on other pockets. And I showed that last week, because I literally started with a character, and then I built from there. You could start with a beat. You could say, I know this is going to be the worst moment of the story. I want a story where somebody's back against the wall because they can't eat a pie. I don't know why. I just think that's really cool. So you write that, you know, and then you could build around that. You can build from wherever you want to start. But like I said, you can uh, do this from any step in the process. That's what's so cool and amazing about uh, the writer's desk is that, you know, you can start from um, story ideas and planning. So like I started today, I have I don't have anything written yet. I don't even know what I'm going to write about. I'm going to totally brainstorm. Uh, you can start from there. You can start from the writing side. I'm just going to pants it. I know it's about a mermaid. I'm going to start writing. And then you can use that sidebar story builder, right? Keep track of what you're doing. Whenever you get stuck, it'll give it to you. Or at the very end, it'll help you uh, organize your thoughts. Or you could analyze your story as it exists now. And then it'll go through all the chapters. It'll give you synopsis for everything. Uh, and it'll give you some suggestions. So, you know, getting organized is easier than ever. It really is. Um, and it's going to get easier even still. I can say that we understand that one of the biggest concerns that artists have in the writing process is keeping their ideas organized because, you know, we're creatives. That's not necessarily our uh, strongest suit. We come up with all these interesting ideas, uh, but we are not necessarily the best at putting them together. And so uh, we're going to continue to push that. And we're going to continue to give you tools uh, to help you organize uh, your thoughts. And again, to be that assistant when you are, you know, having a little bit of difficulty, if you're just a little bit stuck, uh, things like that as well. All right. So something I wanted to point out that's coming up soon. Uh, if you enjoyed uh, hearing about this and uh, you would like to learn more about plotting, we do have a plot craft workshop. And that's going to be coming up on April 22nd. So that is not too long from now. It is like a week from Monday, I believe, right? And if you want to know more about it, you can click down here below and you can sign up for it. It's actually going to be hosted by Gareth. Uh, you maybe saw him in the past if you've been watching our channel for a while. Typically, he speaks about horror, but he is an excellent author and uh, consultant and story doctor and all that stuff. And uh, it's great to hear about his thoughts in general about writing, uh, especially if you don't write horror and you, know, you get to uh, tap his brain a little bit. So that's a lot of fun as well. Uh, for you, organization equals writing outlines and never following them. Right. And that's why it's not a process for everybody. If you do not think that writing an outline to start it off helps you because you're just going to ignore it anyway, then yeah, don't spend a lot of time on it. And in fact, the fact that you can use it to kind of get the juices flowing, generate some ideas, you'd be like, okay, that's, that's a starting point. You're not spending a lot of time on it. It gave you a few suggestions and then you can just go off to the races. Sure. And then you can keep track of what you're doing in the writer's desk, right? With that little sidebar, you can keep track of what you're doing and therefore not get lost and have it all ready for you when you need to do the developmental edit after you finish that first draft. You always pants the first draft and try to get more organized for the edits. Exactly. At some point, you will need to get organized. And so at, to some degree, you have to outline. Like, because if you're going to do story development till editing, right, you're going to need to know what's in your book. And if it's, you know, 80,000 words, it's like you can't just keep 
reading it over and over again, 80,000 words. You need a high-level synopsis, what happens. And that's where the story analyzer, you know, hit that button two minutes, bing, and you got it, and you know exactly what happened in your book. Super helpful. Because you might just completely have forgotten. You're like, well, wait a minute. I forgot that they went to this town here, and then they go back to that town there. That makes no sense. Or, you know, I forgot that I set up this entire plot, and I just forgot about them. I forgot that this character just disappears. You know, all different kinds of things like that, for sure. Somebody was asking, is the workshop for commercial genre fiction? If you're not writing genre, would this be too plotty? Um, Gareth is a genre writer, but, uh, you know, anything about narrative really is applicable across the board. So it would be applicable even if you're writing, you know, nonfiction or something where you could say you don't lean so heavily into the story beats or things like that as well. Could you say... A romantic su suspense in the Regency era. Absolutely. Yep. If you want to start with something as high level as that, mm -hmm. certainly. In fact, uh, I'll do that and I'll show you what it comes up with. I'm kind of curious. You piqued my curiosity with this. So I'm going to hold on. A romance suspense in the Regency era. So I'm going to say a, a romance suspense in the regency era all right what is the main character let's see what it comes up with or who is the main character i should say lady amelia fairchild sure okay antagonist lord percival montague yep pretty standard as i said the, the sort of suggestions it'll give you when you get very genre are going to be kind of on the nose-ish, right? Because that's what you told it to do. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we have a lavish ballroom, the strict societal norms and things like that. Yeah, fair enough. What is the ultimate issue? I'm curious. Where does this go? What is the big disaster moment? Mr. Alexander has been injured while trying to protect her from Mont Lord Montague's henchmen. All right, fair enough. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. All right. Uh, somebody was asking, is this going to lead to more formulaic ideas, less original because the suggestions are based on other works? I don't think so, and this is why. Uh, large language models definitely are inspired by what's out there, but it's a very complicated thing because it's not just being merely inspired by what is going on in literature. It's literally the world itself, and it's all different kinds of things. Not to mention, you are specifically tasking it with something. Now, if you're asking me if you sat there and you did nothing, but you just said make up something completely on your own and you did you did you just only went suggestions it would probably give you something that feels fairly average or standard because of course what else does it have to go on right if i just if you just said to me daniel tell me a tell me a random story i might come up with something like right off the fly that's not particularly novel or or crazy or anything like that right However, if you get more specific, if you say, I want to write about a dragon who is in love with a unicorn that lives on Mars and whatever, you know, it's not going to be able to pull anything that pre-exists, you know, and just like, um, uh, you know, when you're talking about inspiration, it's not, it's going to have to think very specifically about that so it'd be the same thing honestly if you came to me as a as a story doctor right and you said daniel i'm writing a romance what might be the reasons why the couple doesn't get together and i could give you the basic reasons why in any story they may not get together right and that could seem very similar to what you might find on hallmark but on the other hand if you had more specific uh character moments and things to talk about i might be able to give more concrete suggestions Right. I'll be able to take it from this kind of abstract. Well, you could, you know, maybe they fight because there's a misunderstanding. That's like, yeah, that's 
whatever 60 percent of romances i don't know but it's a lot right uh no right i would i could come up with something more interesting so it's the same kind of thing i do think that you're going to find that the more you use it as an assistant the more you will appreciate what it has to say that's what i'll say there uh da, 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 da. right it can spark the creative juices if you are stuck and no we do not train no all right well, thank you very much for joining me. I certainly hope that you enjoyed this look at the way you can use some of these tools in order to streamline your process. And keep in mind, even if you don't like to use AI for things like idea generation, and I get it because you're like, I'm the person with the ideas. What do I need that for? Again, you have things like the analyzer, right? And it can summarize what you already have written. And that's something that would you know take you a while to do, just typing out all the things that you did in your story and you can have that done within minutes saves you loads of time so you know it, it, there's really assistance for anybody depending on what they want assistance with and things like that right and that's our goal our goal in autocrit is not to give you some formulaic this is the way to write a story right the way you want to use the technology is you want to do because everybody's going to be different right this is a pencil or you know, and some people don't even draw, they paint, right? Like we want to give you a whole toolbox. <laughs> I'm getting very mixed with my metaphors here, but we want to give you a whole toolbox or a whole kit of different artistic uh, tools to play with and let you have some fun with them. So we're just showing you different ways you can use them and we're going to continue uh, to develop different uh, tools for you. So if you have any suggestions, always feel free to come in, let us know. We have office hours every week. In fact, I'm about to jump off to join my uh, all of our members for the next one uh and if you are a member feel free to join me there uh and uh yeah if you ever have any suggestions it's like wow i just really wish i could do this you know something like having a timeline of your whole whole book right where it could be like wow these are all the things that happened it's like bing it's right there right who are the characters in my book like we did last week who is the protagonist who's the antagonist who's the relationship like what would a reader think about that what would the reader think the character journey is right again super helpful right and and these are the kind of tools that excite us because it's going to enable so much uh better writing and more effective writing and you know really un lock uh your, your um imagination so that's what we get excited about around here in autocrit thank you so much for joining me please want to offer challenges but don't worry we do have challenges coming up in the near future in fact may we're gonna have another challenge uh i can go ahead and let you know that so uh mark your calendars first tuesday in may new challenge starting like and subscribe and you'll find out about it here first all right i'll see you around everybody have a great week bye